because then it really starts to sound like the most ancient electronic instrument you've ever heard. Is what the action for? You're building the world you want to live in, you know? You know, you could, sure, you can go get a bunch of ammo and guns and canned food and hole up in a bunker and be all scared of what's going to happen. Or you, or you can just, or you can just, like, grow a garden and, and, uh, build a community and, <laughs> you know, like, the choice is yours, I suppose. You can shape, change the shape of your mouth to get different tones. Like, for example, if I go, if I go, if I say, because then if I whisper, really, it starts to sound like the most ancient electronic instrument you've ever That sounds heard. kind of like a synthesizer, right? But if I do that while I play the harp, it sounds like this. Welcome everyone. Today we're cutting it up with Evan Fraser, Dirt Wire. Check this out. Oh, snap. I just called him by his name. I think he told me once in a song not to call him by his name, right? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody give a round of applause. Evan Fraser. <laughs> hey, thank you very much for having me. It's good to be here. Hello everyone. Yeah, so it's such an honor to have you on the show and, you know, really appreciate your encouragement and support. Yeah, that's weird. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, weird shit. <laughs> November 7th, 2023. Yeah. We're out in the red shed. That says, another day in paradise. Connected in with Evan Fraser. One on one special to wake the farm up for your healthy ears. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to start out with this little jam from a decade ago Amphibian Circuit. and support Dirt Wire and you know Evan you and I've known each other and crossed paths for years you know just a little bit about where you've come from like for me I remember dancing to Humsa Leela and you know 15 something years ago out in Santa Cruz area and really connecting to your music there and uh, you know see and connect where you've grown with the music it's amazing so love to hear a bit about where your inspiration for your music comes from. It's always got this like nature, like 
infused feeling that an animalistic creature elf like me loves. Yeah, thank you. That's that's cool. Well, I it's it's uh, it's really special to have a connection like that. I'm glad you know Hamsa Lila because that was a a band that's very dear to me and was it really uh, shaped my musicality a lot. And um, it was uh, kind of a dream come true for me to to, to join that band because uh, I I'd seen them while on tour with another band. And uh, they just blew my mind, and I was, it was actually at this festival called Earth Dance in Laytonville, up in Mendocino, California, and uh, I saw them play at the Fortis stage, and they have these goat gut string, camel skin, Moroccan instruments that are kind of like bass-like, and they had them all yeah. amped up and mic'd up, and, it's, and there was a drum set, and these beautiful women singing with them and percussion and all these cool chants and vocals and it's kind yeah. of a hypnotic world groove that's the description for Humsa Lila hypnotic world groove I love that and yeah really, uh, so when I when they asked me to come on tour and join with them I was I flipped out I was like wow yes I would love to that's amazing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so I had three yeah. great adventures with Lila, including bringing the sun up at Burning Man and all these uh, Oregon Country Fair affiliated events, and um, anyway, yeah, you asked me about what inspires me and where I get my inspiration. I, it's it's really um, yeah, a lot does come from nature and being in nature and having finding solitude in nature and and finding silence in nature because a lot of these instruments that I play. It, they they're quiet they're quiet and they they have an organic sound to them and uh, I really enjoy the organic sounds I love synthesizers too don't get me wrong and and drum machines and all all sorts of cool beat making devices that are you know utilizing modern technology but I um, I really love like African percussion and African harps and thumb pianos and you know, different flutes and uh, hand drums from the Middle East and um, jaw harps from around the world and harmonicas and slide guitars and, and um, gosh, yeah, drone boxes and bass clarinets and saxophones and melodicas. Wow. And, um, yeah, I grew up playing piano. Um, so yeah. piano is... is, is uh, I grew up in the musical theater with my mom and singing in the car with my mom because we had a 63 dart that didn't have a radio. And uh, so we would just sing a lot because we were, we were in there. And oh, that's special. Yeah, we'd sing all the songs we knew together. It was fun. And then, and that, uh, it kind of, singing in the car is a really great place to develop your voice because it's a, it's a small contained environment and it's private and you can just belt it out without any inhibitions you know and right. um that's a great spot to sing and um yeah so and then i my parents vinyl collection was a huge huge big influence on my musicality and and you know just what i the music that i love and i know for uh, for the rest of the band too like for the rest of dirt wire for mark he traveled a lot in India and, and Africa, and uh, same with David. They've both been to India and Africa, and um, uh, we all met at California Institute of the Arts, so I had some amazing teachers along the way, and turned me on to all sorts of cool stuff, and different percussion instruments from Brazil and India, and, uh, and then I met at um, a man from Burkina Faso in the in the bark station in the Bay Area, and he was playing Kamala Ngoni, which is essentially an African harp, often mistaken for a kora, but it's not a kora. It looks like a kora. It just has less strings, so it has about eight to ten strings, um, or fourteen. And koras have twenty-one. And the main difference between the, uh, the Kamala Ngoni and the kora is that the kora is tuned diatonically with twenty-one strings. And the Kamala Ngoni is mostly tuned pentatonically with um, 
you know, 8 to, to uh, 14 strings. Wow. So, anyway, diatonic means 7 note scale, pentatonic means 5 note scale, so it's just, they just have a different sound. And That's you can, so yeah, like, They all have different fetching line strings and different, uh, um, different tones. Depending on the size of the size of the gourd and what kind of skin, if it's antelope or or goat or um, even cow skin, they all provide different sounds or vibrations, I guess. Yeah, they yeah. some are more bass-like, some are more tenor-like, some are higher, more harpy and beautiful, and, you know. But they can all kind of be funky too. It's, it's like this great contrast of beauty and funk together in one yeah. instrument and and of course the african blues is in there too yeah with the that yeah with that you know i love your attraction even to instruments that when you look at them you just see nature i mean you look mm-hmm. at a gourd you see skin around the edges you know with fur and uh, yeah that's you know it's fascinating and you know, to get your hands in, you know, I love your, e- sounds like you just have this natural passion and eagerness to, you know, know these instruments too, not just see them. Absolutely, yeah, I, I love to, 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 you know, teach myself to play things that I find beautiful, you know, and from, they can be from anywhere in the world, I, I love to just try to, uh, See, explore the instrument, see if I can get some sound out of it, and then go on YouTube and see how people are playing it, and then kind of emulate them, and or take a lesson from someone to yeah. um, to uh, get some pointers to to really make the thing sing, and and then add it to the repertoire, and it all becomes part of the palette to to create tracks with and um, perform with. Not all of them make it to the road because the road is a a tough place, and you gotta have really sturdy, sturdy instruments to to uh, be able to hang with the rigors of the road, and have proper cases for everything to make and pickups and make it amplified, amplified so everybody can hear it. Yeah, and, and then even tuning them, I guess there's not like little tuners you can clip on them, or how does that work? Yeah, I do exactly that. I okay. just clip on a guitar tuner and keep. If, if yeah, I, I finds the cool. notes. Yeah, that's great. Cool. Yeah, yeah, but I I really do draw on nature a lot as far as uh, I I love to uh, give a voice to nature. You know, if if I may say that, I um, yeah, I mean these plants and animals and uh, pristine natural places, they they. They have a voice too, and you know we want to speak for them through the music that we're making, uh, ideally, and just bring recognition and bring a a feeling in your heart of of resonating with that place, and um, or those animals, or or whatever needs to be done to protect that place. Wake the plant. farm up! Wake the farm up! Everybody's excited. That was oh, I had goosebumps there. I appreciate that that's you know your poetry just naturally flowing about how you feel about that and how you're connected with that and shut the farm up <laughs> this is the black lodge singers with dirt wire intertribal
So while we're here, I wanted to ask about the name Dirtwire. To me, sure. it, it's always made me think of the mycelium wires in the soil that are made of fungal paths, you know, and how they move through and connect us, you know. It's like that real dirt wire of connection where we can communicate. Whereas, you know, of course, we're taking like these nature things and giving them a voice, bringing their voice louder. That's a fascinating thing with a microphone. A person with the quietest voice could get up onto a microphone, the sound man could adjust it just right, and they could be the loudest voice. And just be speaking with the softness that they're coming with, like the softness of a squirrel waking up in the springtime. You know, and mm -hmm. boom. So mm -hmm. the dirt one, yeah. man, I don't know. That's my little elf, elfin unknown on where you guys came up with your name take on dirt wire and you know we all created yeah. our <laughs> I really love that. I love that. I mean, it's it's interpreted however however we want to. Yeah. And uh, but I like I like your interpretation a lot. That's really cool with the mycelial network and um absolutely. I I I mean, I'll tell you how it originated. But first, I have to tell you that you know I just watched this cool video that showed up in my feed. And Paul Stamets was talking about a connection that he made to the mycelial met network about. He just had a kind of a, a realization, I suppose, that he articulated saying that um, when when human beings get together in community and um, celebrate and they're kind of in a primal state, like playing drums or around the fire and singing and, or, or, or whatever it may be. Maybe it's a, you know, fat sound system in, in the desert. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's, there's, bass frequencies are, when bass frequencies travel, they're like long, long, uh, long frequencies. So they, they travel farther. And, um, so these, and if you, if you think about mycelium, it's kind of like little strings. And so they can vibrate like the strings of a guitar if they're, if they have, uh, Frequency, bass frequencies or whatever frequencies, you know, um, vibrating to them. And uh, once they start to vibrate, they carry that, that vibration with them through the mycelial network. Is that cool or what? Wow. That's, yeah, that's, wow. I'm just fresh back from Halloween where there was a lot of bass going into the soil and you know, I did not even, my brain was prepared to hear what you just shared. And <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, like, there was a, I, I don't know, there's whimsical things, like, there's beer signs everywhere. And I'm not like, I don't really drink alcohol or look for beer in a festival, very, you know, so it's like kind of like almost this like obnoxious big sign. So I had to like transcend it with my brain and I changed it into an, an acronym that just told me that bass elves eat roots. <laughs> and I just like totally was connected with that like, you know, this vision of like that bass coming through and these elves like, I don't know, it's just kind of like a imaginary way of picturing these little entities vibrating through the soil. And it's amazing to think that when we host a moment with our fellow people around a fire and play drums and bring songs to the earth how mm -hmm. that science is even being shown like hey this is real like you're you know putting energy out and creating this so mm -hmm. yeah it is and and that's why it's all the more important to send out a positive vibration um because you know you you if you have this power you're sending out vibes and if you want to infect your environment in a positive way, the intention and the vibrations that you're sending are so important to uh, to to uh, to send and have a positive effect. So, um, yeah, that's that's a really special thing. And uh, I, like, on on one hand, I'm at the festival sometimes, and I'm like, oh, geez, I bet the squirrels are hiding from this this DJ. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. Had, I had a funny squirrel moment, you know, like early in the mornings, I'll go out and like kind of tend to some of our areas that, you know, we have our installations in and um, at Halloween, I went out one morning and there was a bag moving around on the ground 
Then all of a sudden a squirrel popped out of it with an apple and took off and like tucked it into a branch in the tree. Nice. Uh, Squirreling it away. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Well, I'll, I'll tell you about the name. It Dirt Wire came. David Satori, who, who I started this project with, yeah, um, yeah. He, he, he was also in Beats Antique. He also started that one. And uh, he, um, he blurted it out one day when we were trying to figure out what to call the music we were making. And um, Dirt Wire was originally just a project uh, projects of recording that we were uh, just having fun in the studio, kind of creating something new that we wanted to. I had recently gotten a hold of these African harps and added uh, them to my arsenal. It was such a big, expressive um, beginning of a new chapter. We were recording that, and he was he had just picked up fiddle and viola, and um, so we were combining these, and we made that first album and called it Dirt Wire. He just blurted it out one day, and I was like, ah, that's got a good ring to it. I liked it because it represented a bit of the electronic and the organic yeah. in one word, which yeah. um, which resonated for me. But yeah, as you pointed it out, it it uh, it can have multiple meanings and and uh, symbolism, like including the the one string bass that Mark plays on stage yeah. called the Whammo. Like to me, that is the, the dirt wire. wire. How did you say that it kind of blurred it? The Wemol? Wemola. Wemola. Yeah, Wemola. Wemola is, uh, is an instrument. It's a one string bass. And um, Les Claypool also plays it. Nice. And uh, it's really fun. And uh, yeah, it can get pretty nasty. And it's just like. That's that deep, dark cuts that get in there, that deep, dark, down in the dirt wire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you could call anything a dirt wire, really. It's any any string that's got a cool distorted tone or mouth bow, bitter bow. Could be a one string guitar, who knows? <laughs> or else it's uh you could you could put a you could you could put a uh, take a tomato can and, and uh, put a wire through it and then step on it and keep it put some tension on it and then hit it with a stick that's pretty dirt wire yeah too. yeah what's the yeah. instrument they used when performing capoeira yeah bow. yeah it's Bidimbao. a musical yeah. bow yeah. musical bow from from brazil and it's got a, a a long stick and a piece of wire and um, a gourd to help resonate the sound, make it louder that you kind of affect the tone by pushing and pulling it away from your belly to uh, kind of create a, a wah-wah effect. Nice, yeah. Gets that suspense going for, uh, you know, the two competing dancers. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's an instrument that really yeah, that's actually the instrument that made me want to go to Brazil when I was 18 years old. And I cool. I, okay. I, just, I saw that instrument and I heard the sound of it. I was like, what is this? What in the funk is that? Yeah, and uh, yeah, and this was, you know, a while back before Capoeira became pretty popular in the United States. So I, uh, I just thought I got to go to Brazil and get one of those. And I fell in love with Brazilian music and all their amazing percussion. It's a whole Brazilian musical universe, depending on what part of Brazil you're in. And they have multiple genres, and it's 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 an amazing place. So I went to Salvador. I went to Salvador da Bahia, which is in the northeast part of the country, and I kind of liken that place to uh, sort of like the New Orleans of Brazil, mm, okay. if you will. Yeah. And uh, so it's a very Carnival, potent, kind of. yeah, carnival yeah. capital, potent, strong cultural place with a lot of African influences because uh, that's the highest number of African people because of the uh, that's where the slaves were imported from, mostly mm. from right. West Africa and Angola. Angola, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Some vibes, some things to dance and shake off there. Yeah, to, man. To heal so, that land with that positive music, infuse it, you know, the 
the land everywhere has had blood and tears all over it for eons and you know it's a you know it's a thing to think about really this is like blowing my mind wake the farm up like you know, I've heard of biodynamic preps doing amazing things, but really consciously thinking about connecting with these mycelium dirt wires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I, I made a I made a track called called Mycelium, and uh, it's on the uh, the Atlas EP. Anyway, it's it's it has a cool like haunting sound to it that. Uh, it really put I, my. It was in, the intention was to kind of be in touch with the mycelial network. Hey, maybe and we'll maybe we'll cut into that track in a second. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, yeah. Choke, well, choke. All right, I'll cut it in right there. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so what, yeah, that, that mycelium song. So yeah, often I will be doing things with my hands. I need my face free. a mixture of, of it's a lot of instrumental music which I, and we got some vocal music too yeah. but I appreciate, I appreciate yeah. instrumental music because it's yeah. um, I don't know it's like more open ended as far as how you, you can interpret the music how you want to feel it and there's no lyrics telling you what to feel or giving you certain thoughts you know it's just kind of you can feel the music and do whatever you like with it yeah. If it's inspiring your day and or tr helping you create something, that is that's a beautiful thing, and I'm really glad to hear those those stories when people tell me that they made a painting or they had a baby to it or whatever. <laughs> that's an amazing story to hear, huh? <laughs> they like they like tell you which track it is. <laughs> like, Thanks. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah, I do like writing a lot of my own lyrics. I improvise lyrics pretty much constantly and having good rhythms that are going into places, like you said, that visually allow me to create the wonderment around me I like and it really helps me channel in a lot of the Hope State Prepper kind of flows that I want to be sharing and communicating with people. And you know, you, yeah, hope stay proper. I love it. Yeah, that's something I'm, I, you know, I want encouragement, support, and encourage. I mean, right now, if you go to the internet and type in hope stay preppers, it takes you to a bunch of doomsday websites. Weird, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. How about what if you just put in hope stay? Yeah, I mean, you could probably find some arrangement where it gets you to some other things. I like the hope stay prepper kind of concept. You know, it's like. We want to be prepared. We, you know, it's it's one thing to look at the future and kind of have some speculation on what it might be, but it's another to like take some responsibility in your part of connecting into what that future is going to be. So for me, it's like an important thing to communicate that I'd like to have a hopeful future. So that's what I'm going to prepare for, and it's a lot more challenging. It definitely gets you into the the permaculture realm and having shared and taught permaculture for like 25 years it's I've heard so many doomsday prep stories and have noticed that it's easier to go get like a list of ammunition and food supply and put it in a bunker for a certain scenario that you think is going to happen but ultimately we're going to have to adapt anyway so I really think that the people for example that made it through the 
last, you know, big ice age where all hope stay preppers and they figured out how to wear animal skins and stay warm and all the different things. And the ones that were doomsday preppers, you know, they probably got, you know, they probably went somewhere else. But, mm -hmm. but it's an interesting yeah. thing, you know, just to explore those kinds of realms. And was I getting to on here? It was, uh, I don't know, like there is kind of like this post-apocalyptic Western vibe that I sometimes get from Dirtwire that, you know, does take me into these future realms and explores these realms where things could be different, like our calendars could be different, like what are all the different things that could be different with this whole Wake the Farm Up show, people know, so I'm going to cut it off here with myself, but we are looking at society beyond its broken stuff, and what does that bring us back to? It's our humanity which brings us back to our, you know, we're gonna make food together, we're gonna make music together, we're gonna sing, we're gonna make baskets together, walk in the forest together. And these are all important things that I wanna bring into the show. Your guys bringing music together and knowing how you support these other things too. In the past 2018, I remember we connected at summer camp Soul Patch, which is like a permanent permaculture installation there and I just felt really supported by you and David Satorius. You guys came through and you knew what we were doing, knew what we were talking about and like, you know, it felt really encouraging and supportive and, you know, we, I hope you know that permaculture community and beyond are supportive of you guys bringing these realms through your music to us. Absolutely. Oh, man. Thank you. That's, well, feelings mutual, man. I, I, I mean, we're your cheerleaders, you know. <laughs> I, I, I don't get much of a chance to pick up a shovel, but sometimes I, I do, and, you know, I'm always moving around. But um, I, love, I love supporting all kinds of permaculture and, and, and in all the ways that I can because it's, it's um, so important that we learn to live in harmony and and with our planet and and live in a way that's regenerative and um you know i think it's pablo picasso he said first i dream the paintings then i paint the dream and i thought that's so great because you just you're just like you're building the world you want to live in you know you know you could sure you can go get a bunch of ammo and guns and canned food and hole up in a bunker and be all scared of what's going to happen or you or you can just or you can just like grow a garden and and uh build a community and <laughs> you know like the choice is yours i suppose yeah yeah it's like which way do we want to go yeah, so um, we love supporting with, and I love I love seeing videos of people like, you know, they're pushing a wheelbarrow and they got a boombox with dirt wire blasting or whatever. And yeah, you know, our music supporting their creations there. Yeah, our uh, you know people out with their hands in the soil creating these creations with an inspired soundtrack. That's mm -hmm. you know, beautiful. Um, then you guys do things like like musician retreat type of things. There's one I was inspired you guys had offered this past summer in Boulder, Utah. The yep. Mountain Gas Ranch. That sounded pretty interesting. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, we we um you know it's, it's sort of a new thing, but um. Basically, it's a weekend, a long weekend of retreat and inspiration and uh, concert and walks and talks on the, on the land and camping and really good food. workshops and play shops and um, 
a journey set of of uh, kind of us providing music for a journey of whatever wants to happen, you know. And um, it's it's our chance to kind of create music that's more um, nurturing and ambient and chill and. Yeah, it might get to a higher energy place, but it's it's more of a, it's an improvisational flow of of music that kind of happens spontaneously with whatever's happening around us and how we're, we're however we're vibing off of each other, and um, it's cool because you know you go to a dirt wire set and it's 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 revolves around you know having a fun dance party together and there's. There's lots of beats and bass, and it's all, all on like that. But um, this is a different opportunity and the journey set to kind of show a different side of our musicality and uh, with uh, a nonstop improvisational musical flow with all of our global instruments and, and uh, amazing musicians. Yeah, I mean, anything is possible. Anything is possible, but generally it's like there's a connectivity of whatever the previous vibe is and it's evolving into the next vibe, and that's kind of like maybe the whole night starts with a sound bath and we kind of weave, weave through, off of that into something else. And um, and yeah, it can, it can go anywhere. It's just, it's, you never know. Yeah, and that's that's what I loved about Hamza Lila too was that we were basically doing that, but with a band, and we, we had a we had a set of tunes, but there's so much open um, open ended in space for creation to play it completely differently each time. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's on, it's on Spotify. You can find it. There's... Hamsa Lila is two words. Hamsa H A M S A and Lila is L I L A. And uh Salila, baby, go check it out. Wake the farm up. I'm dancing.
Elf loves Hans and Leela. Elf been dancing to Hans and Leela. So yeah, I like doing time travel things. We did one episode that was a rare gem of uh, what I used to call Rainbow Rock Stars. It's the Blue Gaia episode. They were a band that performed in 2006, you know, Colorado and all over the country. And so we did a time warp and went back and brought that, some of those songs that were just hidden on a CD somewhere in West Virginia. <laughs> So yeah, we'll do a little, that was a fun little time journey and checking out that Hans and Leela. I got dancing, everybody was dancing a little bit, um, having some some Tulsi tea and having good times. Um, so man, I'd, I'd love to hear where you guys are going. I know with uh, like the Satori story, is he going, you know, he's doing his own performances now. Um, he's not performing with you guys, Dirt Wire. Quite so much anymore, huh? Correct. He is uh, he's starting a family in Boulder, Colorado, and um, yeah, so we're supporting him in that, and he's still is helping us produce and um, create videos and and um, contributing to all of our releases. So um, awesome. he's he's our brother, and and uh, you know we're. Glad to have him on the team, yeah. but now it's just it's Mark and I hitting the stage and yeah. and um, giving bringing the music around the, the country. Mark yeah. So what what kind of things are coming? You know, is there? Uh, I don't know. I heard, yeah. heard some fun stories of some other musicians that are going to be playing with you guys on this these coming up tours. Um. Yeah. Let's see. Well, this one here. We've got eight shows in the Midwest coming up. We're taking off to to um, Springfield, Missouri, then St. Louis, then Indianapolis, then Detroit, and then we're going to go to um, Grand Rapids, Chicago, Madison, Wisconsin, and then end in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So that's going to be a great little run here. That's and um, yeah, so. That's about to happen right now. And then, um, yeah, I don't know when this airs, but <laughs> maybe you let your Midwest folks know about those shows. Yeah, I'll if try you to can. In time. try to get that out soon. But yeah, we're on this See tour, you. the Four Directions tour, and the Four Directions goes all over the map. It's uh, We're going to be doing some Northeast and some Southeast and um, bringing it back to the West Coast. Here in, in January, we've got a pretty great run ha happening in January, so look for that. Um, pretty sure we've posted the dates already on our on our dirtwire.net is where you can find our um, tour schedule and our online merch store and and uh, stuff like that. So that's a good spot. And of course, we're on YouTube and Spotify and. Um, Apple Music and uh, all, those, all those good places, SoundCloud. Yeah, yeah all the things. Yeah. Mm. So uh, another question I have for you, just some uh, thoughts. I wanted to, kind of going back into some of the different instruments, I wanted to explore something with you. So I don't know how it's happened, but I've always played Blades of Grass. Everywhere, yeah. I, everywhere I go, it's like these little instruments everywhere, and I can just pick them. I mean, imagine if like harmonicas grew everywhere, right? And, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of sounds like this. Yeah, was, was that a blade of grass? You just blade of grass me? <laughs> yeah, it's actually, a, it's kind of a bird call actually. Um, Wow. It, it's, it, it's a lot like a blade of grass. It functions the same way. Yeah. Yeah, here I got a blade of grass. <laughs> ah, 
great. He's talking on that thing. That's cool. Yeah, somebody asked me, like, how I learned how to play the blades of grass like that. And I was like, well, you know what? I was that last generation that didn't have email in high school or even college zone. And, you know, like, in my, I, I didn't get an email until I was, like, in my 20s or something. And just, you know, our hands were free. Our hands were free to pick blades of grass and play them instead of, like, checking something on our phone. And I played them all the time. It's just, mm -hmm. like, everywhere you go, you're in a drum circle, you grab one of those, and you can play along. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it cuts right through the mix. <laughs> nice. You, uh, you have an instrument that I saw that you've played. It's the five-leaf five leaf brass mouth harp. Um, oh, yeah. Kushang. Yeah, Kushang, Chinese ho-ho. It's from the Yunnan province, I believe, and it's, it's this brass five-leaf jaw harp. Um, sounds like this when you... And it's not up against your mouth. Wow. And then I put it up in my mouth, and then it's you know, just going to make it louder, and then I can change the tones by changing the shape of my mouth. Good jam. Dude, that was beautiful. Thanks for letting me step in there. I couldn't help it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes around the fire, man. Yeah. Our jam. Yeah, I look forward to catching a, you know, a weave in life with you around a campfire jam sometime. That would be good. Really appreciate, yeah. appreciate you uh, getting through this dirty wire and connecting with us all on the show here at Wake the Farm Up. Yeah, I'll wake the farm up. Little, you know it. Give us a little five leaf brass down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, there's so many different jaw harps from around the world. Like, like here's one from North India. Wow. wow. Or here's one. Here's one from uh, Siberia. Yo, 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 that's amazing, like, wow. I grew up <laughs> with, like, my, like, and my family had one of those drawers in the dining room that just nothing was in it except random things, and there was always a jaw harp in there, and I would play. It was, like, fairly, like, I guess maybe, I don't know the sim I don't know enough about it. I didn't know there were so many different ones. Wow. Yeah, there's so many different ones. There's pretty much every Asian country, every European country, they kind of all, every Southeast Asian country, they all have their own version of it, and they all claim it as their own. It's kind of like, it's, it's as common as a drum, you know? You find drums in 
everybody has a drum in their culture, you know? Yeah. It's almost like that. And now it's spread around. And, and in Africa, too, they have a mouth, mouth, different mouth bows, which are kind of like a, like a bow and arrow, just the bow part. Hmm. And you put the, the bow up to your mouth and pluck the string, and you can kind of get similar tones. Hmm. That's awesome. So your mouth kind of becomes the resin box, resonator box or whatever. Yeah, here, I got one right here. Let me uh, test it out. <laughs> yeah, you do. It's amazing yeah. how many different, I mean, listeners, you can go back if your ear wasn't totally tuned into that and listen to these different sounds. Each one makes their own complete sound. That's amazing. Yeah. They have like, I, I, they, they, they all have like their own reverb setting or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's the reverbs coming just from uh, how you uh, shape your mouth and move your tongue and change, changing the same like whispering different vowel sounds and get different tones that way. It's kind of like throat singing, you know? Throat singing, if you, like, uh, Tuvan throat singing, they say, so if you want to try, I, have a, I had a great teacher, he kind of gave me a quick, quick lesson at <laughs> throat singing. It's pretty funny. His name's Soraya, he lives in Portland, and he's an amazing throat singer. He actually won a, in competition in, in Tuva and um, anyway he told me here's how you do it he goes if you say if you make a sound like a sheep that goes <laughs> right <laughs> so if you say that if you go you get your voice to do that but then you say weird really slowly the word weird just sit real slowly as you make a sheep sound. Like, so it'll sound like this. Anyway, that's something fun to mess with. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, weird sheep. That's a weird sheep. Weird. Yeah, so, so, like, historically, the jaw heart is fairly quiet. Jaw It's fairly quiet. Cool. It's really cool getting it to the microphone, kind of like we were talking about earlier. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because then it really starts to sound like the most ancient electronica instrument you've ever heard. Mm. And people are like, wow, it sounds like electronica. And you're like, yeah, and this thing is thousands of years old. Right. So. Um, that's what's so cool about it is accessing the overtones and changing because your mouth is like a filter and um, you, ch you can shape change the shape of your mouth to get different tones like for example if I go if I go if I say if I whisper that sounds kind of like a synthesizer right but if I do that while I play the harp it sounds like this Thank you. 
That's an incredible little rift. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, and it's like little pieces of metal in a little shape. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I don't know. One of the, my favorite names for the instrument is uh, comes from Italy, actually. Hmm. They call it Scacciapensieri. Scacciapensieri means literally the banisher of thought. I love that. So, yeah, you can go and, like, get yourself into a trance down by the river playing one of those and clean your thoughts yeah. out and watch the river flow. Exactly. And it's it's a great thing because it fits in your pocket and you can, you know, go on a hike and get to some place really quiet. Or Ideally, you find a cave or something that has some natural mm. reverberation. Great. Start playing it inside the cave. So, um... Uh, on that, like, have you played in caves much? It sounds like you yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I'm always on the lookout for those, and just like, not all of them. Um, not all of them have are naturally reverberant. <laughs> Let right. me say that again. Right. Not all caves are naturally reverberant. <laughs> That's the um, quote, quote of the day. <laughs> <laughs> But some of them are, and um, they, yeah, they're very inspiring to sing. And it's so primal, and you can hear the sound bounce, bouncing back off the walls right to your eardrums. So you're, you're kind of simulating playing into a microphone, but you're in a natural setting, so pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I know where I live here in southern Indiana, we try to find old cisterns out in the woods and, you know, go down in them and sing. Or uh, sometimes there's old silos, and they still have the, yeah. the the round cap on top. You can go in there, and it's an amazing like it's tubular. <laughs> oh, I still haven't done that. I've heard about this. And, and so tell me, okay, you can tell me something. These silos are, are there's a certain time of the year when they're empty, right? Because well, like in a picturesque. You know, you know, in my mindscape, a nice, you know, one of the dirt wire cuts would take me to this place where I'm in this, like, grassy field where nobody cut hay that year, and there's a couple old rusting tractor parts in a silo where there used to be a barn next to it, but it's not there anymore, and you just go inside of it. There's probably, like, some broken stuff and some spray paint on it, you know? That's, that's usually where I go and find them, and they don't ever put stuff in there. But uh, most of the commodity markets are in larger silos now. So people that are using the silos that you see on the side of the highway, they're, sometimes they use them for you know, the commodity corn and soybeans and all that, but not so much. And there are a lot of farms still using them for growing their own grain for their own cattle. So, I mean, they're all, there's not like a regular schedule on them. With the, I see. with the commodity market, you can store your grain in there and just wait for the, you know, I guess what you would call like the stock market price of corn per bushels going up or down. And when it goes up, then you could go and take it any time of the year. I see. Wow, that's cool. Well, I would love to, to uh, man, just put the word out of I'm looking for a silo to, to play music in and recorded and that would be such a thrill for me I, I got a, I got a pretty cool one that you know it's not far from here in northern Kentucky kind of near the Cincinnati airport um, yeah we can we can talk about that too and yeah if anybody else knows maybe next thing you know just because if this gets in the recording here you know you might get a bunch of feedback and have a whole tour set up of silo recordings <laughs> <laughs> people are like, oh, that would be amazing they're like I got a silo Come on over. What do you think? The Evan Fraser solo silo tour.
Yeah, I mean, it's just I just get so much inspiration from uh, just the tubular echoes and mm-hmm. reverbs like that because um, it's just so it's super inspiring, and that's why cathedrals cathedrals are like that too. You know, they're built to be like that because it, it sounds you get the sounds you get just mm. from a, you know singing in a cathedral mm. really. It, it really does feel like a spiritual experience. Oh, I so can there's see something it. to that, and yeah. and it's like, and it's you know before sound systems and speakers and microphones, that's what they had. Yeah, that so. was that was the special effect, you know, and like you'd go to certain places that had water or something that would bubble up and down and that would do things and yeah, so yeah. I, I, I we did a, the wake the farm up show did a recording. Um, people you can check that out if you have it but we did record in a cave in West Virginia with Aaliyah Rosenblum who brought a singing saw which was fascinating like a singing saw and a banjo in a cave yum oh that's cool you know that's on my list of instruments to teach myself (laughs) yeah well you play fiddle huh you know, no, you, you, I you, know. You, uh, David you, plays fiddle. Do you have you worked with Bo as much? Like the, yeah, a little bit. I I dabble in that. Yeah. I, I bow. Mark Mark's gotten pretty good at bowing his banjo and guitar, and he bows that whammel a one string bass too. Um, but I I did you know that you know that mouth bow I was playing earlier. Yeah. I started I started playing it with a bow actually. Oh, um, cool. Like across, right, get this. it's like across your face. <laughs> yeah, bowing across my face, literally. That's what it looks like. Um, here, let's get it going. <laughs> whole sound to it like with the effect of the fiddle it like it sounds like a little el- like a little patch of moss off in the forest and that sounds coming from it or something and, like if you went to it there'd be like little elves dancing on it with like little yeah. fiddles and a whole little carnival <laughs> oh yeah that's a great image exactly man <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow man yeah. I, I might have to go there um man i really appreciate you you know getting into this show and supporting and sharing i really wanted to hear what you had to say and i'm you know there's so many like wake the farm up mind-blowing moments in this episode um is there anything else that you would want to share with the listeners here and you know about anything that you'd want yeah well thank you for having me it's been a pleasure i i um want to let people know that we have an ep coming out called the four directions and that is coming out here in geez a week or so i believe um and um yeah and then we've got all these dates coming up the fall tour dates through the midwest and uh, some California dates, and then we've got a January date in um, in the Northwest and uh, in the Western states. So those are happening. We really appreciate all your support. Yeah, DirtWire.net uh, for all the details on the dates and online merch stuff. And um, yeah, we just appreciate connecting to people and all the love and support that we've received and wherever we go and share the music and um yeah and also really appreciate all the great work you're doing with your hands in the ground and the soil and kiss the ground and all that good stuff wake the farm up
Connect, link up, everybody. We love ya. Build and encourage and support. Thanks so much, everybody, for following us on Spotify and Instagram and on our social media networks. It really helps us, so much appreciated. Oh.